So in the words of Monty Python, now for something completely different. So uh, I like to work on big natural and social science problems related to sustainability, not necessarily with commercial applications, but if I had given this talk 15 years ago, there would have been a slide about building energy efficiency, and that slide would have eventually become the intellectual property of uh, first fuel, which we sold in 2019 to in a, as part of a roll up and is now up light. So what I wanna do is just show you some of the research that I'm working on right now. So the first thing is, is there a local CO2 effect? So we assembled this interesting data set right here at BU, where we have number of cars going by on the mass pike, we have atmospheric CO2, and we have uh, weather station, hourly data, and what we find is, yes, there is an hourly relation between CO2 in the atmosphere and temperature. The question is, what causes it? Is it waste heat? Is it what plants are doing with their stomates opening and closing them? Or is it a local greenhouse gas effect? We're looking at how that relation varies by time of day and season. And it looks like that it is a local uh, greenhouse gas effect. Another thing that we're looking at right now is something that Ben's going to talk about, environmental or energy distribution and justice. So we looked at the 2021 blackout in Texas. We, we tested three hypotheses. One, there was a loss of power and there were disruptions to transmission and, disrupt and distribution. Are those two related? Yes. So you have to separate those two when you ask questions about environmental justice. Did rich people kind of ride out the storm in a way is better off than poor people? There the results are mixed. It's not clear that rich people escaped and poor people suffered, but there is pretty clear evidence that people who identify as underrepresented groups suffered more than their fair share of the blackouts, but we make no claim that this misallocation was purposeful. The other thing or another thing is looking at cost reduction in PV modules. What economists do is they tend to focus on learning by doing. The more you do something, the better you get at it, the cheaper you can do it or they look at these own price elasticities. As the price of PV modules comes down, people want more of them. But what we've done is estimated a simultaneous relation that indicates there's this multiplier effect. That is, as prices come down, people want more of them, they produce more, prices come down more, such that when you're done, this multiplier effect actually increases the efficacy of learning and price reductions by about an order of magnitude. And the last thing I wanna tell you a little bit about is something you may have heard about, engine number one, electing its candidates to the board of directors of Exxon Mobil. They were successful and we wanted to see, does that make a difference? So we tested, again, two hypotheses. Was ExxonMobil stock performing poorly because they ignored this, the uh, risks of climate change? The answer is no. We were able to attribute them to things like oil prices or oil price volatility. And the last thing is this abnormal returns were related to actions by engine number one, but they had no long-term effect. So hedge fund activism may be effective, but in the case of engine number one, no harm, but no benefit. Let me stop there. <laughs>